the last few years, they've had some very good results, especially in Abuja against Nigeria in the World Cup qualifiers. And for you, and with the materials we have, do you think we can get over the line tomorrow? Um, good, good afternoon, all. Um, yes, this is our, our objective. We uh, are very, very conscious of what uh, this game means. Um, not only the, the nation, but of course the, myself, and the players and everybody involved, we know what this game means. So our preparation um, has been for the last two days. You know, I've often spoke about the difficulty of, of preparation at international level, but it's the same. It's the same for the Central African Republic team training today and playing tomorrow, and it's the same for us. And we will do everything that we can to get uh, the result that we want to get. Um, so our preparation has been good. Uh, as with all international camps, sometimes you miss players through injuries, and of course we are missing some uh, through injuries, but it's always an opportunity for others. We are playing at home, we have a good record here, and it's a record that uh, we want to continue. Right, so um, before my colleagues come in, I think the communication director mentioned Joseph Penso. Can you give us an update as to why you took that decision to let him go together with the medical team, Joseph Penso? Yes, uh, um, and uh, I, would, I would have to say credit to Joseph Penso and also his club, uh, Genk, um, for allowing him to come. He uh, sustained an injury right at the end of the, the last game. Um, he had to have been taken off. He sustained uh, a foot injury. Um, came here um, because he wanted to be here and wanted to be assessed and also his club uh, allowed him to come. But um, knowing that he would, by all accounts, probably be returning back to the club. Um, so after, um, of course, seeing our uh, medical staff, it became uh, quite apparent that uh, he wouldn't be available for uh, Wednesday's game uh, and, of course, now has returned back to the club. But we thank, certainly thank his club for allowing him to come because certainly in that situation there would have been a lot of clubs that uh, wouldn't have allowed their player to travel. Right. Your name, Idiaus, please. <coughs> Please pass over the microphone to him for me, please. Right. And then one question each because of time. Coach, my name is So Albert GBC Kumasi. Your opposite number sat where you are a while ago, and uh, in his intro, he quite conceded that indeed you have a great pool of players, talented ones, to choose from. And uh, it looks to us that already he conceded defeat before the final result is even blown tomorrow. Are you going to fall for that probably and uh, get into his tactics? Uh, no, I think uh, uh, all I can do, all I can do is speak uh, on behalf of uh, myself as head coach and of course the, the Black Stars. That's, that's all I can do. What uh, Annie opposition manager or player has to say about you know their own team or the game that's that of course is their opinion um, my opinion is it's um, we there are no easy games in this group home or away and uh, the level the level of African football has improved I think significantly over the years which means that there aren't any uh, easy games so we will have to treat good opposition good opposition with the respect that, that they deserve. Um, but I go back to what I said, we are playing at home here in Kumasi in front of our own supporters. Um, and uh, we hope, we hope that they can drive us on, drive us on to the victory that we want. Hi coach, um, my name is Gabi of CTFM TV. Um, so, quick one, I think you mentioned about Joseph Penzo having to leave the squad. Is there room for any replacement? Because there is reports that Fatou Isaac, who of Leicester City, will join the squad. How true is that? Um, yes, that is true. He will uh, join the squad. He's just, of course, joined um, Leicester City, which is a, a one, wonderful move for him. Um, coming, obviously, from Portugal, where he didn't play so much, of course, was involved with 
the under 23s in Morocco in, in the summer, we played all, all three games. Uh, and it's a good move for him, and I think one that will really develop his career. So yes, he will join. We're hoping that he will be with us um, this evening. Uh, my name is Patrick Apiokuli, RFM. About Joseph Impe, pencil injury, will it affect your that is on tomorrow's game? Uh, no, I mean you. You you spoke about um, about Joseph Pencil's um, withdrawal from the squad, um, but that would be the same as others. You know, um, Thomas Partey and um, Daniel Amate, um, even going back to Ashimiro, which is a, a few weeks ago. Um, uh, Benjamin Tetti, that has been in and around the squad and fit now. So, so. Yes, and also, of course, yes, uh, Joe Wallacott. So there, there are several. So uh, I think as regards one um, uh, individual, uh, this is football. And what you have to be able to do is you have to be able to adjust you, if for any potential player that, that perhaps might have started and, of course, is injured. It's a, it's a really good opportunity for somebody else. And that's where you have to look at the, the strength of the squad that you have. Um, I think it's a good squad we have. It's a good squad, it's a good balance of a squad, good balance of young players and, and experience. Um, and we will have to pull on. We will have to pull on that experience in what will be a tough game and we will have to pull on that, that useful, useful um, uh, uh, qualities that some of the young players have. Good afternoon, Coach. Um, Abraham Alokare, Asas, 90.5, Kumasi. Coach, I wish you the best for tomorrow's game, but there's one reality that I think we must all be uh, alert to, and that reality is that Ghana sits advantageously in our group. We have nine points, but we could also end up, at the end of 90 minutes, not qualifying for the AFCON next year. How does such a reality impact on your ability to psych your players uh, in the direction that it is now or never for the team? Um, yes, I understand the question. And um, I think the, the question applies to uh, myself and the whole of the team. You know, there, there isn't one player that's in this squad that uh, isn't very, very conscious and aware of what uh, tomorrow's game means. Um, I think we know the mathematics, we know about winning or drawing the game and um, the, the consequences of losing it. So that has to be a driving factor. You know, I think for, you know, we, we, there isn't a player, maybe some of the young players, but there isn't a player in the squad that, you know, hasn't played games that maybe at the end of the season or at some stage or semi-final or a final where the game means more. And this is the last game, last qualification game, uh, and everybody is aware of what this game means. And what we want, we want that, we don't want that to be a burden. We want that to be something that drives these players on to get the result that we need and we want. On your court, my name is Sally Sally, um, Husky Radio. Um, in the past two games, Ghana played both home and away. Our last game here at home was a bit of um, difficult because um, we struggled to score at the dying best of the game. Um, against Madagascar, to, there was a little bit of comfortable performances based on what people saw and then how people respond to that game. Do we or are we going to see a different or a little bit of twist in your tactics to suit what people expect and what the journalists expect and what you think will better the team? Yes, I think, um, well I know what everybody expects and wants, they want to win, you know, and in whichever, I'm quite sure in whichever fashion this win comes um, will be acceptable because it, because it means qualification for AFCON which is our big goal. Um, I, I am very conscious, I'm very conscious, particularly of the last performance where we did not perform at our best. Uh, and I am also conscious that you know we have found it difficult to get the goals 
that we need to make the games more comfortable for us. So this I'm confident on, but still, you know, whatever my tactics or team that I go into the game into tomorrow, it is very much to score goals and win. But the last part of what I said is the most important thing. You know, we are up against a good side, a good side that know that they have to get something here. So I don't see a team, an opposition team, that's just going to sit back and allow us to attack wave after wave. So it's about getting the, the, the tactics right. I am conscious we need to, to score goals. And I said we will drive that onto the players and do everything we can for that to happen. All right, thank you, Coach. Um, my question is to um, I'm Asari, Oskanin TV. Um, first of all, um, the invite of Andrea, you the captain for the side, has been in the news for this after the squad was announced. Um, I'm expecting you to please address it on why you invited the captain um, for not playing for a while and also clubless. Then um, Richard Ofori, also the goalkeeper, got an invite, and Edmond Ado. Edmond Ado, the midfielder, has also not played for some time now. Then finally, Patrick Pfeiffer, um, the defender. Please let him answer okay. the first right, part. Right, so, Edmond Ado, um, Andre, and, and then uh, Richard O'Foley. Yes, right, thank you. Then, when he's done. Right, right. Yes, I, um, uh, I, I can ask, answer all three in, in one. You know, what, what I always have to do, I have to look at the, the balance of the squad. I have to look at um, the injuries that, um, that we've um, acquired before the squad was announced. And I have to get that right balance, that right balance of experience. You know, what, you know, is this, is this, you know, the right game to bring in players that are not proven, that have not maybe not been in the squad before? Um, yes, there can be some part of that, but, but also there has to be a part of having some stability in, in the squad in what is, a, in what is a, a vital game. So for everybody, there's, there's nobody that has the right to be in any squad. They have to earn that right. And that can come in different ways. That can come with somebody like Andre, who's our captain, who's uh, a big influence and, and respectful player, respectful player around the squad. So for what he can add to the squad. Um, and Edmund Adu, you know, for the games that he's played and also for the options that we have in central midfield. And um, you might think different, but we um, certainly as from offensive, offensive midfield, you know, we don't have as many options as what we have in other positions, you know, particularly players that have played uh, and been in previous squads. So for, for every player that's in there, there's a thought process that goes on. You know, nobody, nobody gets into the squad just because it's a squad. They, there's a thought process for every single player. And um, that's for me to think about. It's always difficult for, for everybody that wants to pick a squad because I'm quite sure if I spoke to all of you individually, the squad would differ by five, six players for all of you. Um, but it's my responsibility to pick a squad that I think will win us the game. Right. And then what was the question about Patrick yeah, Pfeiffer? Yeah. Finally, um, even though I understand that um, you are watching some particular kind of players, but I was asking on Patrick Pfeiffer yeah, since he squad. switched nationality from Germany to Ghana last year. Um, yes. Among the five players, only um, um, Patrick is yet to get an invite to the national team. I'm only asking if you have been watching him and what is the situation on um, Patrick. Um, yes, I'm, I'm aware of um, Patrick. I spoke with him um, uh, some, quite some time ago. He has had some difficulties. He had uh, had some uh, injuries in that uh, in that period of time. But he is a player that's that's very much on the radar that uh, we are aware of. I think he's injured at this moment. He's, he's I don't think he's playing at this moment. I think he started the, the maybe the first game of the season in the preseason. Uh, so he is a player that we are uh, aware of, um, but I have to say he's, he is, you know, certainly since I've been in this job, um, I've been a, a made aware or through, you know, our scouting system through myself, um, there are so many 
so many either first or second generation Ghanaians that, that can be or are available to play. Um, but um, Patrick is certainly one very much that we are aware of. So you take, you take the next one, then Sarah, and then Said, and that will be it. So the final three questions. All right, so um, Coach, I'm Robert Dramani with the Hello FM, Despite Media. Coach, my question has, happens to be on the local player, Jonathan Sua, his call out to the Black Stags. Um, how is he coping up with the team, and is there a possible debut for him come Thursday? Um, firstly, yes, it's good to, um, to see him in the squad, and, and he, I think he deserves it. I was fortunate enough to see him again on Sunday, um, scored two goals and uh, potentially could have scored uh, another two. Um, it, it, it is and has been my responsibility to you know, watch as many games as I can. I can only watch so many because although um, this is our local league, we also, of course, have a huge amount of players playing in Europe. So I, I watch as many games as I can, which, is, which allows me, one, to get an understanding of the levels of the leagues and the teams, and, uh, but more so about the individuals. And um, Jonathan was one, I, I have to say, that was brought to my attention first before I had the opportunity to see him. Um, so yes, he will be in the, in the squad, um, and I say very much deservedly so. Coach, um, Salah Sifiawi Sahara Football. Uh, Kumase, we know, is the home of Ghana football. The Black Stars haven't lost here in over 20 years. Yesterday, the fans were not happy not to have a few of the players in training. What message do you have for them? What should they expect tomorrow? A message to the fans of Kumase. Um, well, well, firstly, we, we apologise that we can't um, allow the, our fanatical supporters in for, for both training days. Um, it's, it's a difficult decision, but we have some work to do, some tactical work to do that um, as I think as we all know in these days of social media and um, uh, telephone, sorry, their mobile phones mm -hmm. that, that they can video and so. Um, so it's impossible really to allow two days, but today we will and um, uh, we are always grateful. You know, I don't. I don't think there's one player that's one that's not excited to see him to get a, to get an early feel of also what they can experience tomorrow. Most most have experienced it, but it still gives us an early feel of of uh, what what they'll experience. Um, but I think also more more importantly, it's, a, it's an opportunity for the Black Stars to give something back to our supporters. And um, I have to speak about here in Kumasi because this is where we are and this is where. The game is, but our support here has been incredible. Um, we have a very competitive game tomorrow. Our support can make the difference. They can, and they have made the difference in the past. And uh, we very, very much appreciate, and we hope as many as possible uh, turn up to support us. Right. Said, no, Said, you take this one. I give you the final one. So give it to Saeed, please. Coach Saeed, Akuma FM. Coach, Gregor Che is playing for Clement Font in France. Why is he not in the squad, but clubless on three the guy in the squad? Simple one. Uh, one Yeah, sorry about that. Um, I was just checking something. Yes, I am aware of um, Grigion. I've uh, seen him play. I was in France um, uh, a few weeks ago just to to see um, a few games there. So uh, I am very much aware of. But what I can tell you is, is that uh, you know you have you have mentioned uh, one name. You could mention. 20 or 30 names that, um, and this is, this, is, this is what I have found since I've been in the job, that, that there are, you know, if I have to pick a squad, 24, 25 players, um, the amount of players that are very close to being in that squad um, have grown. 
and it's got bigger and bigger and as almost as each uh, few weeks go there's another player that's recommended to me or through our scouting system or through the files that we have uh, so he would just be one of, um, of numerous numerous players and um, I have a squad to pick those that are not in the squad you know all they can do is continue or work as hard as they can in their in their club football whether that's here here in Ghana or in Europe to do as well as they can to potentially at some stage earn the right to be in the squad Hello, my, the name is, final one, yeah. my name is Yapo for Junior Key TV Sports Plus. Now, Thomas Pati is a big player for Ghana. He's kicked over 80 plus um, forest zone passes for the Black Stars. And when you look at passes over 150 in the African qualifying series, he's one of the top players when it comes to progressive passes in the Black Stars. Um, in the absence of Thomas Pati, is there anyone who can help in progression, um, given the metrics of the other players, which is uh, below 40? And pass, progressive passes. Mm. Um, yes, it's a good question, and um, we we are very aware of um, of uh, Thomas's um, abilities in that midfield, and whether he's whether he's playing in a deeper position or whether he's playing higher in, in an eight, um, he gives the team a composure and a quality on the ball. Um, but it's my responsibility to to scout as hard as we can. Okay, and identify similar type players. You know, it is probably an area. It's probably an area that the certainly for the ones that have been in the squad. We don't have so many. Kofi, of course, is somebody who's been out injured for for a while that has that that type of ability as as what we regard as a number eight. Um, but it's my responsibility to source and find us find the amount of players that we need the creative type players uh, in midfield that, that Thomas would be. Right. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, coach, for coming and all the best tomorrow.